On a beautiful evening, a man is too focused on his phone until he forgot about his cooking in the kitchen. The food started to burn because it was left too long. He shocked and frightened and quickly called the fire department. The fire was raging and spreading throughout the house. Ambulance and firefighters rushed to his home and he was rushed to the hospital for his injuries. He suffered burns in several parts of his body and he will be treated using nanocellulose method. Doctors who were assigned to treat him came up with the decision to replace his destroyed skin with new skin tissue generated by using nanocellulose. Are you aware already? You have injuries to several parts of your body. So I will use the nanocellulose method to you for the healing process. situation before, we can conclude two problem statements from it. The first one is, can nanocellulose be implanted in skin tissue to repair the skin burns? And the second one is, how does nanocellulose can treat the skin burns? The first one is, yes, nanocellulose can be implanted in skin tissue to repair the skin burns because it acts as a protective barrier and can repair connective tissue. It delivers cells into wounds and as a material for advanced wound dressing coupled with drug delivery, transparency and sensory. The second one is the nanocellulose that was used to treat the skin burns is bacterial cellulose. It is because skin tissue engineering involves reconstructing two main layers which is the epidermis and the dermis. Bacterial cellulose is the most widely used type of nanocellulose for reconstructing these layers because it resembles two natural soft tissues including skin. Bacterial cellulose is a hydrogen containing nanofibrils which might meet the fibrillar component of natural extracellular matrix. Bacterial cellulose has a great capacity to retain moisture and it also has a appropriate mechanical properties such as strength, amygdalus, elasticity and conformability. Tissue engineering TE, is an interdisciplinary field that applies the principle of engineering and the life science toward the development of biological substitutes that restore, maintain, or improve tissue function. Functional tissue engineering can distinguish from cell biology by the focus on the emergent function that arise from the organization of large number of cells into higher order structure, variously called tissue or organ. Depending on the level of anatomical complexity and structural integration, there are three general components. First, reparative cell that can form a functional matrix. Second, an appropriate scaffold for transplantation and support. And last, bioreactive molecules such as cytokines and growth factors. Next, nanocellulose is a light solid substance obtained from plant matter which comprise nanocellulose cellulose fibrils. Its condition is pseudoplastic and possesses the property of specific kind of fluids or gel that are generally thick in normal condition. Then nanocellulose combines important cellulose properties such as high specific strength, modulus, hydro hydrophilicity with specific features of nanoscale materials. Nanocellulose can be into three main category. First, cellulose nanofibers, CNFS. Second, cellulose nanocrystal, CNCS and last, bacterial nanocellulose PNC. The most commonly used nanocellulose in skin tissue engineering is the bacterial nanocellulose. This is because it resembles natural soft tissue such as the skin tissue. Bacterial nanocellulose is a hydrogel which contains nanofibrils that mimics the fibrillar component of natural extracellular matrix. 
It has a great capacity to retain moisture as well as it has an appropriate mechanical property such as strength, young modulus, elasticity and conformability. Thin films of bacterial cellulose were used as substrate for the cultivation of human transformed skin keratinocytes and human normal skin fibroblast cell lines. These thin films of bacterial cellulose support the spreading, growth and migration in keratinocytes but not in fibroblasts. Fibroblasts only form clusters and detach from the films due to weak cell and material adhesions. The adhesion and growth of skin cells on bacterial cellulose can be further improved by combining it with other biological active molecules such as enriching the films with Chitosan. Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Khalid Fitri Bayaya and my metric card number is J190079. So I would like uh, to present my part which is plant and algae derived nanocellulose in skin tissue engineering. Plant derived nanocellulose has frequently been shown to be promising for skin tissue engineering like bacterial, engineer, uh, bacterial nanocellulose after throughout the physical and chemical process that has been modified. One of the example is cellulose nanofibrillar (CNF). Atomic force microscopy shows a significantly higher degree on of orientation nanofibers along a single line surface. Both ACNF and CCNF surface support the adhesion, spreading, viability, and proliferation of most embryonic fibroblasts. So the cell performance was better on ACNF. Commonly, it is derived from hardwood craft bark and from softwood craft bark that is uh, fabricated using an evaporation induct droplet casting method on glass. In addition, uh, transferable freestanding nanocellulose have also been produced with a similar element of CNF. So, when an electrical charge is introduced into nanocellulose, it can be functionalized uh, with various molecules like cell adhesion pt punch and silk fibroin which uh, improve the capacity of nanocellulose for colorization with uh, cell and for wound healing. The benefits of nanocellulose in skin tissue engineering application is that nanocellulose is light, super strong, highly conducive, non-toxic, electrically conducive, high density strength, and also gas impermeable. Meanwhile, for skin tissue engineering, is a distinctive feature to regenerate patients' own tissue and organs that are free from biocompatibility and free from biofunctionality as well as severe wound rejection, immune rejection. Tissue engineering is also considered as an ultimately ideal medical treatment and also persuasion for body to heal itself. My name is Nuzahira Begum, Binti Lukman. My matrix number is J1980253. Benefits of nanocellulose in skin tissue engineering. Tissue engineered skin provides both dermal and epidermal components which required to achieve functional wound closure. The epidermis is the thin outer layer of the skin that is visible to eye that work to provide protection to the body. The dermal is the middle layer of the skin. The dermal contains blood vessels, hair follicles, sweat gland, collagen bundles, fibroblasts, and also nerves. This technology also has been used to effectively close full thickness burn wall and treat burns that are greater than 50% of the total burn surface area. Nanocellulose also assemble functional constructs of skin tissue like restore, maintain, or improve damaged tissue or the whole organ. This technology also enables tissue regeneration where evolution prohibits natural regeneration. Besides, it also has low infection rate. First gen in nanocellulose in tissue engineering is capability. There are some techniques that is related to mechanical disintegration and suitable for scaling. However, there are some problems with this technique because they are inclined to high energy consumption. Next is environmental impact. In pretreatment of nanocellulose, it can give a negative impact to environmental due to the solvent and acidic waste. 
Finally, in terms of cost, large-scale production of bacterial cellulose and electrospan cellulose nanofiber that is difficult due to the nature of their production, which is low yield.